Tuesday. Whatever happened to the restaurant uh, Ruby Tuesdays here in Ocala? And I know there's a, a Neil Diamond song, uh, Ruby Tuesday as well. God willing, we're going to do the last chapter of the Epistle of James, the fifth chapter. You give me five, okay? Um, and he was the first bishop of Jerusalem, and he was a cousin of Jesus's. And Herod had him killed, and he's the first priest, bishop of the first Christian Catholic community in Jerusalem. Catholic means universal. So uh, Jesus came for everybody in the whole world. But before we do all that, behind me is uh, an extraordinary picture. It was originally uh, an altar piece in front of an altar in a hospice for the dying. And it's called the, the Eisenheim altar piece. It's also known as the Grunwald. Uh, Grunwald was, was the artist. Lived at the same time as da Vinci, uh, Michelangelo, the great 15th century uh, painters. His style is very different, if you notice. Like in this one here, um, he has Mary dressed in white, quite tall, uh, John quite tall, uh, Mary Magdalene kneeling on the ground with a, a canister of oil on the ground beside her. And also in the picture, John the Baptist, who was already dead, if you don't mind. And he's pointing at, at Jesus, and he's saying, he must increase, I must decrease. And then, of course, the lamb that was slain is worthy to receive dominion and power and glory. That's the Lord Christ. I didn't notice this until recently. The artist has, up the side of the cross, there's a stalk of wheat growing. And of course, you know the rest of the story that um, Jesus was the first and holiest seed to fall into the ground, to quicken and to increase. And of course, we take wheat at every Mass, and the same Christ who died on the cross is made present. Take this, all of you, Jesus said, and eat it, for this is my body. Church is open most days until 3 in the afternoon from early morning at 6.30. You're welcome to come visit. So, James, again, the fifth chapter. The early Christian community they were called Catholics about after the year 100. Catholic is a Greek word. It means universal. Like even to this day in Greece, there are uh, mechanical shops that do the repair work on the universal joints in cars, and they're called Catholica, interesting enough. So it means universal. Here comes everybody. Um, it has its problems. It had division in the church and sometimes between the rich and the poor. And it's, it's very disturbing. Even in our own time, you can see uh, churches who, who, who claim the name of Jesus and yet they patronize the rich. And they even promise a prosperity gospel. All of, all of this stuff. And that's not the gospel. So listen to James now. Now an answer for the rich, start crying. Weep for the miseries that are coming on you. Your wealth is all rotting. Your clothes are all eaten up by moths. All your gold and your silver is corroding away. And the same corrosion will be your sentence and eat into your body. It was a burning fire that you stored up as your treasure for the last days. Laborers mowed your, mowed your fields, and you cheated them. Listen to the wages that you kept back calling out. Realize that the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. 
On earth, you have had a life of comfort and luxury. In the time of slaughter, you went on eating to your heart's content. It was you who condemned the innocent and killed them. They offered you no resistance. And again, we're doing it today. You remember at the time of Jesus, he told us the parable of the rich man who feasted splendidly every day and Lazarus covered with sores at his gate. And the rich man gave him nothing at all. Uh, and when he died in the parable, he goes to hell. So it's pretty serious. There's also a reference here of sins that call out to God for vengeance, like holding back the money of your day laborers. And there's four that I can see mentioned uh, in the scripture. The first one is in Genesis uh, chapter 4, when Cain kills his brother Abel. Uh, God says to Cain, um, where is your brother Abel? Your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground, the blood of the innocents. And again, America, Europe, the whole world. Uh, since the 1960s, uh, we have killed uh, three billion children. All that blood cries out to God for vengeance. And then the next one, uh, at the time of uh, Noah, it says the wickedness of man had increased upon the face of the earth. And it cried out to heaven. And then we, we see that, I don't know what they were doing at that time, but it had increased everywhere. And... Um, Again, God poured down the waters of the great flood. And eight people in all escaped in the ark. Hopefully, the church in our time is the ark where we escape from the evil that men do and live a life of, of honesty. And then enslaving people uh, cries out to heaven. God said, the, I must go down and inspect you know, the, the sins of the Hebrew slaves in the land of Egypt cried out. And then the sin of sodomy cried out to heaven. And we, we patronize it. Isn't it strange? And we call ourselves Christians. We think it's okay. And then the one here is withholding the laborers, the money of your day laborers. Uh, somebody comes to work on my vast orange orchards. Uh, he has a family, a wife and some children, and they're living in one of the shacks on my farm. And they pick oranges all the week, the family as well, some of the children. But the, at the end of the week, they come to me for their wages. And I say, I can't pay you this week. You haven't paid the rent on the house where I put you. That cries out to God for vengeance as well. Okay. Um, so James says then to sum it up, laborers mowed your fields and you sheeted them. Listen to the wages that you kept back calling out. Realize that the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. On earth you've had a life of comfort and luxury. In the time of slaughter, you went on eating to your heart's content. It was you who condemned the innocent and killed them. They offered you no resistance. Then he goes to um, the final exhortation to his community. Be patient, brothers, until the Lord's coming. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again in glory soon. Be patient, brothers, until the time of the Lord's coming. Think of the farmers and pa how patiently he awaits for the precious fruit of this ground until it has had the autumn rains and the spring rains. You too must be patient. Do not lose heart, because the Lord's coming will be soon. Bear in mind, soon. In the mind of God, a thousand years is but a day. A day is a thousand years. We're only in the third day since all these things happened. Be patient, brothers. Do not make complaints against one another, brothers, 
so as not to be brought to judgment yourselves. The judge is already to be seen waiting at the gates. For your example, in submitting with patience, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Remember it is those who had endurance that we say are the blessed ones. You have heard the pa of the patience of Job and understood the Lord's purpose, realizing that the Lord is kind and compassionate. Now, during the worst stages of COVID, I had asked the Lord to uh, protect me so I could look after the community at Queen of Peace. And when COVID, I believed, was actually over with, I remember saying to myself on a Sunday afternoon, um, it looks like it's over, Lord. Uh, thank you. Thank you for, for, uh, uh, for protecting me. That very day, with tremendous force, I was hit with COVID so bad, I had to be hospitalized before the day was over. Um, it took me weeks to recover. So why am I telling you that? I don't know. But I was peaceful. I want you to know that. Because in here, uh, even to this day, I hear Christ has died, Christ is risen, and with us right now. He will come again in glory soon to judge the living and the dead. So above all, my brothers, do not swear by heaven or by earth or use any oaths at all. If you mean yes, you should say yes. If you mean no, you should say no. Otherwise, you make yourselves liable to judgment. If any one of you is in trouble, you should say a prayer. Jesus, I love you, possess me. If anyone is feeling happy, um, he should sing a, a psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. If one of you is ill, he should send for the elders of the church, the priests of the church, the prayer of faith, and they would, sorry, they must anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord and pray over him. The prayer of faith will save the sick man and the Lord will raise him up again. And if he's committed any sin, he will be forgiven. So confess your sins to one another and pray for one another and they will cure, and this will cure you. The heartfelt prayer of a good man works very powerfully. Elijah was a human being like ourselves. He prayed hard for it not to rain, and no rain fell for three and a half years. Then he prayed again, and the sky gave rain, and the earth grow, grew crops. My brothers, if any one of you strays from the truth, you, you, you leave Jesus, and another brings him back to it, he may be sure that anyone who can bring a sinner back from the wrong way that he has taken, will be, having, will be saving a soul from death and covering up a great multitude of sins. So that's James. He tells you about one of the things that's different about the Catholic Church, is that we anoint the sick and the dying. He says, if any of you is sick, call in the elders of the church. And every week, Father Paul and I are either in West Marion or hospice houses, or in homes where there's sick people dying, and we anoint the sick, and we prepare them for the journey, the last stage of the journey. Some of them recover uh, for, to eternal life. Amen. It's still Tuesday. Amen. <laughs>